the cheetah is an animal that lacks genetic diversity. So we were actually trying to freeze in a window of time where the cheetah is today genetically, and then we hope at least grow those populations through Africa. On a warm autumn day at a winery sitting atop the mountain ranges of California's Silicon Valley, Dr. Lori Marker has traveled 15,000 kilometers from her home base at the Cheetah Conservation Fund in Namibia. She's making one of many fundraising stops to be the voice for a species that suffered a 90% decline in the 20th century at the hands of human wildlife conflict. Dr. Marker was kind enough to sit down with Behind the Bench and talked with us about how the cheetah is facing threats from human interaction. The cheetah is also facing a battle at a genetic level, both in terms of its lack of genetic diversity as well as from disease. As the species numbers decline, each and every one of those individual cheetahs is extremely valuable. And that's why we're trying to actually stop that. But over the years, we found out that the cheetah was so genetically similar that we could actually take skin grafts. And what one cheetah saw as one skin graft to one animal, it accepted it from another animal. So that, uh, with the major histocompatibility complex, it made us realize you know, just how susceptible they may be. We've seen major outbreaks of disease. We've actually seen mu mutated feline viruses actually come in and uh, wipe out populations, you know, 60% mortality, where a domestic cat you might see only one or 2%. Reproductively then, we also know that the cheetah lacks, with the genetic diversity, very high concentrations of abnormal sperm. You kind of look at that, but these abnormalities are you know, 70 to 80% abnormal. Well, our baseline work really looked at finding out more about at least the diversity of the cheetah. And then now using microsatellites, we've been able to come up with a, at least a footprint of each one of the cheetahs. And that's been quite important. As farmers were catching cheetahs, we were able to collect blood on them and use the, the DNA to then look at the, the population. And now we're actually using scat and extracting the DNA from that scat. Um, we're taking it further, looking at relatedness of the population. Since most all the cheetahs came from Namibia that are even in captivity worldwide. So with that, it's allowing us to then look at the future and, and, and having that kind of um, power genetically, we can say to governments, well, we can't lose much more. Um, we need to maintain. And with that, we need help in looking at how to develop these conservation programs um, and open up corridors and keep large landscapes so that we're not continually losing uh, more of the healthy population that's there. As if being at the forefront of cheetah conservation efforts wasn't enough, Dr. Marker and her team also have been extremely resourceful in setting up a high-tech genetics lab about 44 kilometers east of O.T. Horongo in central North Namibia. First established in 2008, Thermal Fisher Scientific supported their original efforts with an Applied Biosystems 310 genetic analyzer and provided local technical support through her office in South Africa. Recently, Thermal Fisher Scientific donated an Applied Biosystems 3130 genetic analyzer to provide a four-fold increase in throughput to upgrade their lab's capabilities. Their laboratory recently underwent additional construction to accommodate increasing numbers of trainees within Africa and invites international collaboration. Well, the 310 was wonderful. It was a one capillary and we um, worked it 24 hours a day for five and six years. And with that, a lot of what we were looking at was training more Namibian scientists. Four capillary now allows us to do so much more. It allows us within Namibia to um, run wildlife samples, not just to the cheetah as well, but also starting to invite people to look at some of their other wildlife population species. As the only genetics laboratory of its kind in the African continent, the Cheetah Conservation Fund invites collaboration from interested scientists all over the world. When you're sitting in the middle of Africa, um, we don't have as many um, technology setups and don't really know how to reach out to people in such a way, but the collaborations from many of the scientists here in the United States have been very important. Having the lab there at the center is really important. Africa is growing and our, our um, areas where wildlife are not in um, big cities and there are areas where people need education and there are areas that are very remote and if we can actually be the model and show that we can actually set it up and make it work, they will come. And those are the African scientists that want to 
be as, as great as every scientist here in the United States is and not having to leave their home and be able to actually work where they can then you know, get on a bus and go see their family on the weekend and yet come back to a lab and do their conservation genetics research that's going to, I think, change the face of Africa.